In the grimy gloom of the distant future, people are still playing Stardew Valley when they're supposed to be working. Hi, I'm Dave, and this is Dave's Weird Project. In this episode, I cover building some Sector Mechanicus terrain that was included in the Kill Team box set. This comes as several large sprues, and they're really nicely detailed. Let's take a look. Step one, as with any plastic model kit that you're cutting out of a sprue, is to cut it all out, clean it all up, and glue it together. There's quite a bit to this set, so the whole thing took me about four hours spread over a couple of sessions. This is probably my least favorite part of the hobby, is cutting and cleaning things off of sprues. But I mean, the end result is good. You get a nice quality mold with good detail. The instructions were pretty helpful, except for a couple times when they weren't. The first situation is this large barrel piece and a narrower pipe type piece that's supposed to go on top of it. The first one of these had a nice middle piece that went on top and joined the two together. For this one, the instructions said to use this hatch looking thing, which didn't fit properly on top of the barrel and the narrower pipe piece didn't sit properly on top. As a solution, I found this clip-on aerator, I think for a sink, at a local store. I cut the middle out of it and discovered that it fits just about perfectly inside the barrel, and the top of it tapers down so that the narrower pipe fits on top. I used white glue to try to stick them together, but it didn't hold very well, so I ended up switching to super glue, and the end result came out pretty well. The other problem with the instructions was these two standing pipes. They're supposed to sit in such a way that the two side junctions come together flush, but as you can see, one is significantly shorter than the other. To fix this, I got some clear tubing at a hardware store and started experimenting with cutting it out to get it the right length so that it would join them together while having them sit flat, so it would be kind of on a downward slope. I glued it between them with super glue and got it ready to paint. I thought it might be fun to make some bases for these at a foam core so that I could try out these cool textured rollers I got from Green Stuff World. Not a paid endorsement, I bought them myself. And I was really pleased with the effect. You get this cool factory texture on the foam. I don't know how well it comes out in the end with all the paint on it and everything. Might take a little more experimentation. There was a little bit of warping after putting the Mod Podge on the foam side to protect it during spraying. So I swept it over and put some Mod Podge on the other side and that mostly helped out. A lot of these pieces are much taller than they are wide. So before gluing them down to the base, I wanted to add some stability if I could. I glued some rocks in underneath wherever I could, and I think it worked out pretty well. I used a spray primer to prime them black, pretty standard fare. However, I did notice that the tubing between the two standing pipes was very tacky afterward. I think it's something the vinyl reacting to the primer. I didn't know how further paint would react to this, so I put some Mod Podge around it just to maybe get a better surface, and it worked pretty well. I was able to paint it without any trouble. Next time I use this tubing though, I actually want to try leaving it clear and having some kind of glowing goop inside. Now that everything's primed, I'm going to apply a pretty simple but I feel like effective paint scheme. This is inspired by Wylock's Armory. For the round barrel type parts, the pipes and the big barrels and the dome looking thing, we're going to start with sponging on a bronze color. Pretty liberally, but you'll still be able to see the black underneath. For the more angular parts, flat surfaces like walkways and the vertical pillars, things like that, I used this darker silver color, nickel, and same as the bronze, we sponge that on liberally. Still want to see a little bit of the black through, but mostly covered. And then while we still have our nickel color out, we take that, go back to our rounded parts, our barrels and pipes, and we're going to start dabbing that selectively over specific areas. Use your judgment here, dab it on anything that seems like it could benefit from standing out from the surrounding color. I went for anything with rivets or other kinds of raised banding, maybe pipes here and there, maybe connectors. And once you've finished highlighting with the nickel on your round parts, do the same thing with the bronze on your flat and angular parts. Highlight, very similar, anything that looks like it could benefit from standing out. Give that a little bit to dry and then I went over everything with a black wash uh, basically Wylock and Black Magic Crafts wash like 10 parts water to one part black paint and a little drop of dish soap. It's a simple easy way to add some depth. Uh, I also have to add a little bit of grime. Just make it look kind of nasty. 
And here's just a quick pan shot of all the terrain pieces once the main paint job is done. Still need to paint the bases, but I'm really happy with how this came out. It doesn't take long at all to paint all six of the things and get this just kind of weathered, rusty metal effect. And I'm happy with it. I think this will look great on the tabletop when the game's in motion. And I'm almost done with this. Just want to paint the bases, give them some color. So I went up with a simple dark gray, light gray sponging scheme, very similar to what Wylock does a lot. And just did a heavy sponge with the gray and then a lighter sponge with the light gray. Also, there were some small details, like little consoles and things that I wanted to paint. I didn't actually capture that on film. It was really hard to get my camera in the right spot and I don't think I did good. But I basically just went really simple. Screens, I painted a green. Buttons, I painted a combination of blue, yellow, and red, just different ones. Uh, there's a little valve wheel inside the big giant barrel. I painted that red. Some other colors in there too. Pretty simple, just little detail if you look close. And here it is all set up on a board ready for a kill team, a two foot by three foot board. Got some minis on there to add to the scene. These tiles are something I'm gonna show you how I made in episode three. They're modular city tiles meant to look like a road, you know, have the road lines in between them. And I'm pretty happy with this. I enjoy putting these together and painting them, getting them mounted, making them look uh, pretty grimy and gloomy. And I like the way they're gonna look when we're playing. Stay vigilant, y'all. So there we go. Some nice, highly detailed terrain pieces that you can use in a variety of settings. Before we get to the lessons learned, I'm going to do all the standard pleading. If you enjoyed the video, please uh, hit that like button and maybe consider the subscribe and share buttons. Uh, also, if you want to support the channel, you can consider checking out my book on Amazon. It's pretty cheap. I'll have Terry put a link down there along with some of the uh, links to some of the channels that have inspired me and I mentioned during the video. I do these projects just as much to learn as to make something, so I'll go over the lessons I learned here. On the crafting side, I learned a lot more about what PVA, white PVA, can and can't do. If it's something that's going to just sit for a while and not be disturbed, doesn't require a lot of balancing, then PVA works just fine. If it's something that is a little more precarious, you want to find something that sets much faster. I also learned that vinyl does not react very well with spray primer, as we saw with that tubing I used between the two mismatched pipe pieces. Next time I use it, I'll take a lot more care in how it gets primed. Using the black foam core was instructive. For smaller pieces, the paper peels off with minor effort, but for bigger pieces, it's kind of a pain. So I've ordered a pack of the bulk stuff from Dollar Tree. We'll see how that works out. On the video production side, I'm learning to keep things tighter. Most of this one was actually shot and edited after episode 3, which was quite a bit longer. This one comes in right around 10 minutes, and I feel like that's a pretty good fit. I'm also getting the hang of Blender for video editing, learning a few more of its little quirks. I like it, but I would like to hear some recommendations for other video editing software. And that's going to do it for this episode. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd also love to hear your experiences with terrain kits like this, especially any extra hacks and conversions you had to do to get it to work. Until next time. Take care, everybody.